Afternoon, everybody. This talk is about the design and implementation of a did you mean spell check server. Uh, so it's not like general spell check in the terms of like you have a document and it's checking each, each, each word as you in the document. It's basically you've typed in a search and it's trying to figure out what search you actually meant to type in. Um, the first iteration was basically a user types a search into the website. We take each word and run it by a spell. We're using the stock a spell dictionaries. And uh, we took the top result for each word and showed the user that one. Apparently, people tell me that uh, it doesn't actually make sense to do spell check in languages like Chinese and Japanese. I can either confirm or deny this. Um, a spell basically takes the word you typed in, generates a phonetic version specific to the language you specify. So it actually has different phonetization rules for different languages and converts, uh, computes the Levenstein distance between what you typed and the words it thinks might match, as well as the Levenstein distance between the phonetic version of what you typed and the phonetic versions of the words you think it means that returns an ordered list of the words that it thinks that you meant. Um, There's a short diversion into what a Levenstein distance is, basically a, math, a numeric measure of how many changes are required to change one word into another. Uh, and here's an example of the Levenstein distance between kitten and sitting. And you can see it's a Levenstein distance of three because there's three changes required. Uh, so what are the problems? Um, one of the problems is that the dictionaries that come with a spell don't have any proper nouns, which is the big ones are like human names and place names. Uh, it also doesn't know, has no idea of what words are common or uncommon. So if you type in something that's very similar to an uncommon, like extremely uncommon word, it'll say you must have meant this word, but probably you didn't because that's a very, very uncommon word. Uh, it also doesn't know what words go together. So it may suggest words that on the surface each word makes sense by itself, but the two words are very unlikely to appear next to each other in a search. Hmm, we can fix this. Uh, so the first problem was making a dictionary of proper nouns. Uh, basically, I took a pretty minimal approach to this and uh, went through the US Census data, and they have lists of the top thousand ma female and male names and surnames. Uh, we made dictionaries out of that data, and also we got place names out of US Postal Service data. Turns out that place names are different in different languages, so we only dealt with this for English right now but eventually we'll actually have to go and get place names in all the different languages. Uh, so the first problem is about a spell doesn't know what words are common or uncommon, common or uncommon, but we do. So I basically pulled one year of searches from Shutterstock, which was millions of searches, and made a big storable hash of each word to the frequency of it occurring. Um, the most common word is something like woman, and that occurs in about five or 10% of searches. Uh, so we normalize that to one, otherwise all the numbers would be very, very small. Um, and uh, so really uncommon words have a frequency very close to zero. Um, so about what words go together, we took the same one year of searches from Shutterstock and basically counted the co-occurrences, what words appear together. Uh, we stored this as a big storable two key hash where the first word is the first key is the first word, the second key is the second word, and then the value stored there is how often they occur together. And we also normalize this the same way between zero and one. So for example, cute puppy has a very high co-occurrence. It's a fairly common search. And uh, porpoise tile is a very, very low occurrence, probably actually zero. Uh, wait a second. Uh, so putting it all together, uh, basically we took the, we take the, this is a many hours to render this also. Um, we take each word they typed, we pass into a spell with our custom dictionaries, we get back a ranked list of the top or 20, top 10 or 20 words that a spell thinks and we basically rearrange those based on how frequent each word is and the co-occurrences of those words appearing together. We can only use co-occurrences if there's multiple words in the search. Um, there's a lot of stuff I skipped here. Um, we recompute. When we get things out of uh, a spell, it's already merged together the weights of the, of the phonetic distance and the non-phonetic distance. So we basically recompute that so we can tease them apart and mix in the frequency and co-occurrence data more intelligently. Um, when I spent a bunch of time on this, I discovered that if it's a multi-word search, the co-occurrence data is much more valuable than the raw frequency data because just because a word is common doesn't mean it appears with a word next to it. Um, and also we could use co-occurrences of uh, the keywords and the descriptions of photos to basically steer people towards not, not towards what other people have searched on, but to steer them towards what people, what we have pictures of. Uh, I chose not to do this because I figured it was more accurate to try and figure out what they were trying to type than to steer them towards what we happen to have pictures of. Uh, also, 
you know, basically 80% of the searches are 20% of the words. So uh, you have a kind of a long tail if you take a graph of, of uh, the frequency of each word. So we perform a lot of smoothing to kind of smooth this out. Otherwise, it, the numbers wind up uh, pushing to the left. Um, here's an actual example of the data that comes back from the server. Uh, this is an English search on Russian battleship misspelled. You can actually see this here as an example of the actual search. We say we don't think it's spelled correctly. And here's the suggestions where we think it's spelled correctly. And these numbers have to do with not confidence, but likelihood of this being typed in. Um, and then we also give you, if you want to tease it out, like you can also see well, how, how likely do we think this is missed, what, what do you think the, the correct spellings for battleship are, what do we think the correct spellings for Russian are. And this is interesting, it actually says that it thinks that Russian is spelled correctly, but it's still suggesting corrections. <laughs> Which is actually because it says that word R-O-U-S-S-I-N never appears in the battleship, but Russian does. Um, and here's it actually on Big Stock website. We haven't actually integrated this into Shutterstock yet. So there's a search for Russian battleship misspelled, and it says, did you mean Russian battleship? This is a search on Angelina Jolie, which is actually one of the test cases I did, and you can see it actually correctly suggests, did you mean Angelina Jolie? And that's all I got. <laughs>